Uh, good morning, Mr. Mvoko. Well, a lot of planning would have gone into today. Um, what is it exactly that the ANC has in store for us? Perhaps before we even get there, let's talk very briefly about the significance of January the 8th. Why is it important for this nation every year on the 8th of January to listen to what the ANC has to say? January 8th is the birthday of the ANC. It has developed into a tradition and a culture for the ANC through its president on behalf of the National Executive Committee to give directives first to its own cadres, give them tasks and call on the people of South Africa to support and rally behind the programs of the ANC. And that tradition is continuing on and on for years since the 70s. It has been continuing and it, it will not stop now. It has become even more important now that the ANC is a governing party because it must talk to the program of transforming society and changing the lives of the people. But it is not the ANC's sole responsibility to change the lives of the people. It must be part of mobilizing society to take charge of their own destiny. Now, what are the key things that this year the ANC wants to make sure that every South African rallies behind it uh, um, in the execution of those tasks? What are the tasks that you're putting on the table for 2013? The first thing that you should appreciate is even better this year because we're coming from the National Conference. So what was resolved in the National Conference constitute the program. More important is the adoption of the National Development Plan as the document that must guide all South Africans. The ANC will rally behind the National Development Plan because that plan is ours, that plan is everybody's, that plan is for the country. Therefore, the country has an, a 20-year window of planning. It must continue rolling it out uh, until society is changed. And therefore, you can go to that plan it, it has uh, put on top of the agenda the question of uh, education. Education is, is, is two most, they, they've identified seven, but two most important is education and dealing with poverty. So the ANC, of course, will have to ensure that when you deal with those two, they're integrated because once you improve the education system, you are dealing with poverty at household level. Let's start with education. Last year, you know, the, the, the Limpopo textbook textbooks yes. crisis. And if you look at the reports of the past few days around the norms and standards, again, the Minister of Education is facing a, a barrage of criticisms about the, the lack of specifics in the norms and standards, which then leads a lot of people to say or conclude that, in fact, the ANC is not as serious about education as it claims to be. When people say that they must assess the problem, Progress made. You know, we, uh, I, I, I had the opportunity of looking at the censorship, censor 2011, the, 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 the statistics of what the state of the country is. And there was the element of education, where the yellow man was tracing the development of education from four different systems and how we have actually closed the gap to a point where there is one system and there's almost equality in the system. If you are a spectator, you won't feel that, you won't understand that. At a point, Bandu education was at the bottom of the, of the, of the hip. Today, more African learners are in school. More girl children are in school. More and more, the number of students in universities increased from 600,000 to over 900,000. The number of students in FET colleges have increased from 339 to 627,000. Now, that progress is what you should be measuring education about. When you have the metric results coming out, you must always watch what has happened to Limpopo. The buckle of the books, but the effort that went in saved Limpopo and there's improvement. What people don't know when there's a, a, a debacle like the Limpopo one, a lot of energy spent in that area. It translates in improvement of the results. And you go to the Eastern Cape for the first time since, 19, since 2003. The Eastern Cape broke through the 60% in metric. Those are the things that you must count. And then ring fence your problem. We're still 
struggling in the area of maths and science. Take that and say, what is it that we're going to do to improve maths and science? Yeah, now, before we, 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 we move on to the other issues, would you not accept, though, that what, what has happened in Limpopo and what is happening now with regard to norms and standards um, actually takes away from the good work that you've been doing overall? Would you not accept that and perhaps find a way of dealing with those things that perhaps take away from the good work that has been done? I know. That's why I'm saying you ring fence problems. But you cannot uh, characterize education on the basis of the Limpopo debacle. When the eight other provinces are doing relatively well, you use those to push. That's why Gauteng has moved on. The, 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 the Western Cape has marked time. Free State has moved on. Northern Cape has moved on. Northwest has moved on. You must be able to put a lot of energy there while you are raising the problem. The, the psych in, in the nation sometimes is that when there is a problem in a particular province, you leave everything, you collapse everything, you run to that problem. If you do that, you'll collapse the system. You continue investing time and energy. Where there's good work, you address the problem. That is the approach. Now, unemployment is the other ch challenge that you're going to be talking about and you want South Africans to face this year. What is it that the ANC is planning to do and where do you want the nation to rally behind you? You'll find out that the, the, the ANC government has put in place an infrastructure program. That infrastructure program must actually be a tool for the government to lead economic growth. It's government-led economic growth. But it will not go to give us maximum results and optimal results if the private sector is not coming to the party. As the, 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 the state is investing in infrastructure, the mines reacting to the wave of strikes are closing Kusasalit, which is Ellen's run in Caltonville. Anglo is announcing 12,000 jobs that are going to be destroyed. Now, if the government moves this way and the private sector moves the opposite direction, we are not a nation. So what is important is to mobilize the private sector to appreciate that they have equal a responsibility in ensuring that we invest in creating jobs. Okay. Now, last... But... But there's another responsibility. You cannot have rights exercised by trembling on other rights. You can't have strikes that are characterized with violence and destruction of property. When you do that, I've said that to my, my fellow trade unionists, that if you continue this way, you are actively destroying the right to strike. Because if the right to strike is equal to violence and destruction of property, you are destroying that right protect that right is an important right. The, lastly, and, 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 and very briefly, you have been here for the whole of, uh, I mean, for this past week, Cyril Ramaphosa has been here, Balek Ambete, the chairperson of the ANC has been here. What have you been trying to, what were you doing? You've been seen going around, going to taxi ranks, to bus terminuses. What were you doing, addressing business people? What were you trying to do over the past? Over what the past we have week? taken over from the last term, which we thought is good, if we have a, uh, January 8th moves from one province to the next, every time it goes to that province, we go through that province and interact so that the people of the province that host the January 8th should not just read about it like other people in other provinces. They must have the opportunity to talk to the leadership of the ANC, ask questions, engage, interact, feel the ANC and not hear it. And that is what we've been doing. We've been talking to the people of KZ and we've been to almost all the regions and talking to members and non-members, explaining what ANC stands for, delivering lectures and listening to questions, get quizzed uh, from area to area and that adds value in terms of people beginning to understand what the ANC stands for. Mr. Mandasha, thank you very much for talking to us and we're looking forward to President Jacob Zuma's message this morning. Thank you very much. I have a